Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome to more of Carla messing about in the kitchen. Today we are going to make chocolate honeycomb slab. I've got the food processor out for this so that I can blend up the biscuits. So I'm going to start with almost a whole packet of digestive biscuits. They're just leftovers out of the cupboard. So there's about two thirds of a packet, maybe three quarters. And I blend those up pretty much into dust using the food processor. You can also do this, of course, in a bag with a rolling pin but I was feeling lazy on this particular day. So I got the food processor out and it does make a much quicker job. Those blended biscuits crumbs go into a large bowl. You're going to need a large mixing bowl for this. And even with a large bowl, I still managed to make a mess as you'll see later on. And then I added about two thirds of a packet of caramelized biscuits. They're the Aldi knockoff version of Biscoff. Again, crumbed those up in the food processor. and they go in with the digestives. Once they're in together, you need to give them a really nice mix around to make sure they are fully combined. There were a couple of larger lumps left there and I just took those out. I wanted this bit to be really crummy in texture. So I gave it a really, really good mix together. And then I decided I would add some cornflakes for extra crunch. So again, those went into the food processor to be whizzed down into something more of a dust. These don't go down quite as much as the biscuit crumbs do. I think because they're lighter, they just fly around in the food processor a bit more. Added those in and combined those well as well. After a quick wipe down of the work surface, always clean as you go, it's time for a fresh bowl. And these are semi-sweet chocolate chips. These are from Costco. And I didn't bother measuring, I just put some into a bowl on the basis that I could do more if I needed it. I'm adding in two tablespoons approximately of golden syrup. And then I've got about 100 grams of the Aldi Nordpak lighter butter. I popped that into the microwave to melt down and gave it a few 30 second blasts, taking it out and stirring it in between to make sure it didn't burn. These are my honeycomb pieces. They're a brand called Bobby's and I just picked them up in my local convenience store. They're sold in the, in the sweet aisle. You could also use Cadbury's Crunchy Bars and just break those up. My melted chocolate mixture is now going into my biscuit crumbs mixture. Once that's in, I'm going to give it a really thorough combine. This is where I realise that my bowl is still actually a little bit small and I managed to make a bit of a mess. Isn't this a lovely bit of camera work with the bowl almost completely out of shot for the entire segment? And here's the moment I realised I was out of shot. My mixture was not coming together quite as much as I wanted it to. So at this point I just melted a little bit more butter and added that in to give it a little bit more, I don't know, glueiness. I've got an eight inch square pan, which I'm lining with greaseproof paper. The easiest way to do that is to put the pan on top, cut slits into the corners and then just fold the piece inside. I'm going to turn out my rubble into my pan, make sure it's spread out really evenly and press it down firmly. Mm -hmm. 
One of the easiest ways I've found to make sure it's compacted well is to use the base of a drinking glass just like this. Press it down firmly all around until it's a nice solid layer. Now I need to melt some more chocolate chips for another layer of chocolate. Again, not really measuring, just any random amount will do. At the end of the day, it's up to you how much you put in. My base is going into the freezer while I melt this chocolate just to firm up a little bit. And while I was melting the chocolate, I found these little chocolate beans that I'd bought in Costco a couple of while ago. I thought they'll make a nice addition. Now my chocolate's melted, it goes onto the base. spreading this out into a thin layer. It's time to add the honeycomb, but I don't want large chunks, so I'm going to smash this up a bit with my rolling pin until I've got smallish chunks and quite a lot of fine rubble dust. We're going to scatter that all over the top and then I'm going to add a couple of handfuls of the chocolate beans as well. And then a few little cake decorations that I found in the cupboard, chuck those in as well. And another press down with the base of the glass because I want to make sure that all of those toppings are firmly embedded into the melted chocolate layer. Covered with foil and back into the freezer where it'll stay for a few hours, but as if by magic, a few hours later here I am again. And I'm going to top it this time with milk chocolate. The semi-sweet chocolate chips are fine for the inside but they're too rich for the topping. So I've got four bars of Lidl's cheapest Simply Milk chocolate. I'm going to melt those in the microwave and then pour that over the top in a nice thick layer. I'm just tipping the pan to allow this to reach the edges and then it will self-level. I'll give it a couple of taps to make sure there's no air bubbles in it, but it will just self-level into a lovely thick layer of milk chocolate. And finally, to finish off, another couple of handfuls of my little chocolate beans, sprinkling those all over the top there. and then a sprinkling of hundreds and thousands to fill in all the gaps and finish it off completely. Foil back on, chill it in the fridge for about half an hour and then I'm going to take it out and slice it into bars. I managed to slice this one into 12 really quite big pieces. This is a large slab of calories. I'll pop a list of what I used in the description box. And there is the finished result. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye for now.